anger is a very necessary feeling. <laughs> and anger is a very necessary instinct because it dictates you right stuff. <laughs> this feeling inside me, like boiling up, was so big, wanting to do something to contribute um, to building an environment where none of this would ever happen to anyone else. <laughs> My name is Anna Tavadze. I'm a Georgian civil activist. I'm 27 um, and I work for three non-governmental organizations in Georgia. Up until this day I work on projects related to good governance and democracy and uh, feminism and human rights in general. I've been involved, like fully involved in activism uh, since 2019 after uh, 20th of June. Um, and this is actually the day that the Shea Movement, one of my organizations, was sort of formed randomly. Just a group of random people that, one of the first ones actually to very intensely identify this government as a pro-Russian government. <laughs> yeah. A life-changing protest moment for me was the 20th of June of 2019. Um, it wasn't so much Obviously, like the cause of why we protested was so important. And the story is that a Russian MP came here. He held the chair of the chairman of the parliament. He led a session in the parliament in Russian that caused a lot of uh, protest in Georgia uh, and in Georgian people, obviously. But it was the response of the state, of my own state, that shocked me. Uh, and it was also like the first protest for me. There were many for my peers before um, that I truly like experienced it on my body, what it means to uh, stand for something that you know for a fact is for the advancement and for the good of your country, but, but be treated way worse than an enemy. 
Um, and uh, it was also a brutal night. Um, I mean, I got gassed, but like that's the least of it really, because that's the night where people lost, literally lost their eyeballs and were shot with rubber bullets um, um, in, uh, in their, on their bodies, like horrible scars on their bodies. It was literally like officially a hunt, like they were hunting for people. Um. So let's go down and start asking people to come. No? I'll take quick, I'll take stills if you're video. They keep repeating this narrative of like, you know, this law is the same that, that we see in France or the same we see in the US, whatever. Um, however, those laws actually specify who is your enemy and who is your partner. Uh, ours does not. It puts EU and Russia, for instance, or countries like China at the same level. Um, it also doesn't specify what types of organizations it's going to keep monitoring. It targets us, it targets CSOs and NGOs that are involved in the type of work that I just described. They've been demonizing us for years now, they've been calling us extremists, uh, they've been calling us propagandists, they've been calling us traitors of the country. I don't remember exactly the date, uh, but, but you can see like it's a, like a middle of a march and it's all the way from the parliament building to Ivanishvili's palace. So right now we're standing like outside of Ivanishvili's palace and the idea is like we need to disturb him at some point as well. We, uh, the slogan says, together um, against the one, but in Georgian it's like a smart wordplay. The protest in 2019 wasn't uh, decentralized. Um, this pro a series of protests is. Um, and what I mean by that is that, yes, we have like an overarching theme and demand, uh, overarching aim uh, that we're trying to reach with this protest. Um, but every group is sort of also at the same time simultaneously protesting for something that's kind of niche and characteristic to their own community. You have everyone starting from, I don't know, medical students who say, I'm not going to be uh, a doctor in Russia, all the way to um, uh, March of Moms. And I would characterize this series of protests as way more existential, like it's like existentially driven um than any protest before it's not hard to understand that the only aim for this law is to create a legal justification for the horrible things that they're going to do right before the elections i think and this is not just my prognosis this is the prognosis of the entire georgian civil society that the first groups that are going to be targeted by the law uh, will be organizations that work on election monitoring election observation missions uh, voter mobilization voter education um, and um, any and all organization that they basically, they've actually been naming them even. And Shame Movement and Tbilisi Pride, among other organizations, are definitely um, on the priority list. Hey, we, we sell up again. Mm. In terms of like organization, uh, organization level, yes, like we're all all concerned about the personal uh, sensitive information that they will take away. Uh, but the main measurement is that you know they want to um, they want to um, uh, put this in the in the registry to act at, in the name of foreign agents, which we're obviously not going to do. We're not going to act in the name of foreign agents because not, that's not who we are. Uh, we're not going to help them stigmatize us even further. First of all, something that I'm really happy about is that most of the civil society in Georgia, it's almost like a very open consensus that we're staying. We're not going anywhere. We're not closing. We do feel threatened, uh, but I don't think we'll feel scared. Um, I mean, there are so many threats coming at us, uh, obviously to different levels. For instance, I haven't been like personally targeted yet, but so many of my colleagues and fellow activists have been, as we said, so many of them have been attacked and threatened. I do think that the uh, purpose of these intimidation uh, campaigns that they have 
is to intimidate, intimidate those who haven't joined our fight yet. Historically speaking, we've, first of all, we've been through way worse and we were able to survive with neighboring Russia. It's just something that constantly has to be on our agenda. Um, as we speak, only um, um, 30 kilometers away, we have Russian tanks, right? 20% um, of Georgia is still occupied by Russia. As I said, even a person of my age and younger um, can't remember a war. Um, so it's a very recent experience, um, um, as well as a historical experience. We've had generations, um, f members of our family with their personal and collective stories, um, telling us what it was like to live in the USSR, what it was like to live um, under Russian influence even before that. I <laughs> 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 I magazet some really worth him, then I got him to a kid here, Chamias Richard. So I'm very optimistic, and it's not like delusionally fed wishful thinking. Like, I actually have my arguments. Um, as to why we'll succeed. Gen Z and like young people of this country are constantly praised for being courageous and brave, but we're also smart. Like we also have critical uh, thinking skills and we know our history and we're very much able to 
um, identify what these processes mean and connect that with historical experiences and also calculate what's going to happen to us as a nation, what's, how it's going to affect our individual lives as well as collective lives and standards of living and quality of life and the existential topics that I'm talking about if we let this go any further. And it's a very clear goal. It's not like we're struggling to fight for something and achieve for something we don't understand. We understand very well and when you know what your goal is, it's easy to uh, carve out the strategies on how to get there. And that's what we're doing with this fight. Mm -hmm.